let's just talk about lighting. And there's lighting can come in various contexts, depending on budget, depending on desire. Um, but the easiest way to light yourself, which I'm doing right now, is I'm sitting just a little bit of a distance away from an open window. And that open window sheds some beautiful diffused light onto me. I have an assistance as well with a ring camera right here because my, my desk is actually quite long. And then I've got two lights on the side here, which I'll also be showing you. And so that kind of lighting um, is, is key to having sort of this consistent lighting on your face so that we can see each other. But the other key component to all the lighting is color. And unless you're doing it for a living, most of us don't think about light in terms of color, but color comes in, a, in an enormous spectrum and they're called Calvins. And that was the, the fellow who originally came up with the notion that light had color. His last name was Calvin. So um, with most of the lights that we are using these days on Zoom, it's really important to have a consistency of color. And, and we will get to that and we will talk, talk about that. Audio for everyone. Audio is a choice again. And by the way, all of this is subjective for you all. These are just options to enhance you. But audio is a great thing to have because as we know in film, you could be watching a beautiful cinematic experience on film, but if the audio is poor or compromised in some way, it's gonna make for a poor film experience. However, if you watch films like uh, documentaries that have been shot handheld and can be a little raw, if you've got great audio, you're still going to have a wonderful cinematic experience. So that's something that we're going to talk about just a little bit as well. How can we enhance our audio in an easy to use way? Uh, what to wear. Uh, I, I kind of have a go bag and we're going to go through this, but um, I call it the go bag. Anybody that's had babies, I think knows what the go bag is uh, or has served in the military or works in production or travels a lot. You have that bag that's available to you when you're racing up the stairs uh, to get to your office and you are still wearing your sweats from wherever you were. You can throw your top on, you can do whatever it is that needs to happen. Just have that easily available for you. And we'll talk about, um, we'll talk about wardrobe uh, shortly, but we're also gonna dip into human psychology when it comes to wardrobe. Uh, then we're gonna talk about uh, glasses and accessories. I am wearing glasses. Um, I have minimal accessories on. Again, this is an option for all of you. If you're gonna wear glasses, try to wear glasses that are non-reflective and position your lights accordingly. So that's something that we'll talk about as we get into lighting. Last but not least, let's talk about background. That's gonna be our last point of discussion. And the background, what you're, what's going on here is something that will be in, taken in along with what, whatever you're talking about, whatever you're engaging in, your background uh, will inform you in addition to that. So we'll move on to the next slide. So it's all about the gear, framing, eye level. So I think you saw briefly, I had a little platform that I'm using. Um, this is a great example of a platform that you can buy on Amazon. Any of the gear that I'm showing you today is very affordable. It's, uh, you can find uh, it or iterations of it on uh, Amazon in whatever price range you want. You can also find these um, inversions that you can make go up and go down. Um, and also for those of you that are standing, uh, there's a lot of people, my husband is one of them, that like to stand when they're presenting. Uh, that will necessitate um, some jerry-rigging on your part unless you have a desk, of course, that rises with you. Um, I have seen some interesting desk configurations with clients as they have balanced books and tables on tables to achieve that goal, which is fine as long as you can keep everything steady, which seemed to be the, <laughs> the biggest challenge out of all of it. Um, as we like to do on sets, we try to keep stuff steady for whomsoever is on set, whether it's the actors or the crew, because that can lead to kind of funny disasters. At any rate, these are great. These um, little platforms for computers are lovely. If not, you can buy things like arms for, if you have a larger monitor, buying an arm to attach to your desk is also an amazing option. 
um, if your camera is mounted to, to your monitor and you wanna raise it up. So there's a lot of things to kind of think about along those lines. Lighting tricks and tips. Um, as you can see with the lovely young lady who is here from Amazon, um, there are, this is an 18 inch ring light. It's what I have. Um, I call it the magic bullet of self lighting because if you have nothing else, if you have a ring light, the great thing about ring lights, and as you can see with the young lady in the picture here, it surrounds your face. So this is, it used to be called a dish light. It's still called a beauty light in still photography terms. It is the magic bullet because it surrounds you with this nice, cool blanket of light. Um, mine's a little bit off to the dis off to the side here because of the position of my desk, but um, I do have a, a window offsetting for that in addition to. So these are things that you're going to be thinking about as you um, engage in your space and and try to realize what are the elements that I need to really help myself shine on Zoom. Um, now, the other thing is when it comes to positioning yourself, I had mentioned earlier that if you have a window in your office space, wherever it is that you are currently working, it's ideal not to have the window behind you. The, as, as awesome as these cameras are on laptops or, or a camera that's on, mounted on your monitor, they are challenged with things like background lighting, they, they struggle and there's gonna be a constant struggle so that you will either have to over light yourself to compensate for the backlighting, which is what we do in cinematography. And that absolutely does work. It just entails more gear. But otherwise, turn your desk if you can, turn your table if you can, face your window if you possibly can, straight on. Um, if you're sitting beside your window, turn it around so you're facing out because that really is gonna give you a more flattering light across your whole face as opposed to just the sides of your face. The goal here is to throw as much light straight on your face as opposed to just the side or the side. Unless you are you know, making your own cinema experience, it's, it's, uh, it's not as dramatic as uh, you would get with that kind of lighting in a drama uh, movie, for example. So. Once, if, if you have a ring light, um, you might have noticed that there's a dial on the back of it. And you can see on the, on the back of this ring light, there's a little dial or a couple of dials that indicate what color and what intensity you can turn your ring light on, on to. And this, this is a little bit of a stumbling block for, for those of us that, that don't know what Calvins are, what color temps are, um, and the magic of a dimmable light or to brighten it up. Those things are all great things, typically during the day, because I think all of us are taking meetings during the day and at night. I do business on the East and West Coast, as well as in two other countries. So at night, you're going to be lighting yourself a little bit different than during the day. But for all intents and purposes right now, we're going to talk about the day. Um, and I'm also going to suggest that we all light ourselves for daylight, which is about 5,000 Kelvins, 5,000 K. And on the back of this ring light, you'll see that, um, and a lot of them have this, um, you'll have a dial that will, you'll be able to dial up and down to 3,200 or 2,800 K. And that's called tungsten. Those, that, that color is this lovely candlelight tone that you see in uh, light bulbs that, you know, you, that, often come with lamps um, that we buy from the store. Um, those are lovely when you are in real life, having a party, hanging out, that sort of thing, but they are not flattering when it comes to lighting yourself for Zoom. This is another area where the Zoom cameras really struggle with um, what to shoot, because if you have something like a tungsten light with daylight coming in at the same time, you've got very yellow light, that is matched up to very blue light. Daylight is very blue by comparison and they just don't mix very well at all. And these cameras really struggle with this. And what you'll see on your screen when that is happening is that the screen kind of jogs. It goes back and forth trying to figure out which light it should be calibrating to. So in an ideal world, and we will, I'll, I'll scroll down just in just a bit, but in an ideal world, all the lights in your space, even the ones up above, which everyone seems to forget, that above light 
also needs light bulbs that are called bright white or daylight, which is in the 5000 K spectrum. And you'll see that if you read the boxes, you're all going to be reading boxes now in, uh, at, at the hardware store. But on the back of the box, it will say, you know, bright white equal to 5000 Kelvins or 4800 Kelvins. That's absolutely fine. You can order them on Amazon. Super easy. Keep a box in your garage or under your bed because you're going to use them all the time. So all the lights that you have in here, and we call lamps in the business, we call lamps practicals because they are a practical lighting system as opposed to our professional lighting like the ring light. So all of your lamps, the above lamp, which I actually suggest that you turn off, um, having an above lamp, if you have it on, um, will darken your room if it's your if it's your only light source and it will it will put shadows on your face that are not necessary and don't live there uh, otherwise so it really is about bringing that light to the front of your face as opposed to the top or the extreme sides i feel like i'm directing plane traffic right now um okay dimmer the dimmer is one of our best friends the dimmer that you'll see on the back, it's another knob that's on the back of this ring light. The dimmer is something for you to experiment with. You're going to turn it up at night. You're going to turn it down during the day. Um, and depending on the weather as well, you'll find yourself adjusting. Um, many of the ring lights come with this automatic uh, little uh, remote. They don't work very well. I'll, I'm just going to turn off my ring light right now. There we go. So that's different. I'm going to turn off my side lights. And I'm going to turn off my backlight. There we go. So this is this is what I look like with no light, which is fine, by the way. This is absolutely fine. And, this, and if this is what you prefer, I do have light coming in from the window. But as this darkens during the day, or in this case, we, we do have some cloud cover in Los Angeles miraculously today. It's not the best that you could be delivering. So I'm going to turn on, hopefully the ring light turns back on with this thing. We shall see. Oh, there we go. It's turned back on and I'm going to turn on my side lights. You guys can see the difference there, I think, too. And I will turn on. I have a little widget for my backlights, which we'll get to shortly. There we go. The backlights help to differentiate my head from the background so that I can I can be seen just a little bit easier. And if you're wearing glasses, as I said before, you can see the ring light reflecting in my glasses here, but not quite so much. You can see my side lights a little bit in my glasses, but these are non-reflected lens, non-reflective lenses, believe it or not. So it's it's minimal reflection that you're getting in these things. Those are all very helpful. So here are the side lights. In my opinion, these things are really worth it because what you're doing is you're creating an additional, we call it a soft box in lighting, where you're getting not only the ring light in front of you, but you're getting a little bit of light on, on the sides as well if you don't normally. It depends on where your window is. You might have a window on the side. If you do, then balance it out with another lamp, whether it's one of these. The great thing about these lights is that just with a touch, you can see the animation there. They, they can turn on and off and up. Now they're off really easily. So these are I, I love these things and um, they're useful all the way around for lighting all kinds of stuff. The trick with these is that it's a fabric shade and it needs to be white uh, because again, what you're gonna do is take out the existing light bulbs I'm betting that are in there, the tungsten light bulbs, and you're gonna put in daylight light bulbs which have that bluish daylight feel to them. And that's gonna be the most flattering consistent light which I have done with these. And so having a white shade please um, use any lamps that you have in your house. Um, if they have white shades on them, swap them out, bring them into your space, use those. Um, the other thing that I've done uh, during COVID when, when everything was shut down, I would jerry rig a shade. So I kept, I would rip a, a colorful shade off, keep the framing, but throw a white cheesecloth over it. And that does exactly the same thing. So I, I do invite you to think about your space sort of, MacGyver things as needed and experiment. Um, go onto Zoom, just go onto a private Zoom and start playing with, the, with this gear and see what really works. Take a picture of yourself. Um, take a picture of yourself doing different kinds of lighting setups and see what you like. 
see what makes you feel really good. Cause that is what it is at the end of the day. What's going to make you feel good. What's going to make you feel like you're your best you. And that's what this is about. Uh, Oh, daylight light bulbs. Here we go. All of this stuff is on Amazon. So here are the LED uh, light bulbs. These are um, daylight bulbs and putting those in fixtures around your space is going to be incredibly useful. So, um, so uh, one of the things we're also going to talk about is audio. And I don't think actually, I'm just looking at this and it's like, uh, I do not have light. I've got lighting here, not audio. This should say audio, but audio, as it says down below, plays a subtle role in clarity and authenticity. Um, I did mention this before in movies. You know, if you've got great audio, it really it not only enhances, but it certainly drives picture. And one of the things that can make a big difference when it comes to engaging authentically on Zoom or on social media is to have really good audio, if you can pull that off. And there's a number of ways of doing this. I've got three different microphones here. Um, one is the blue, which is sort of the gold standard. They sell for about, you can get them from anywhere from 79 to 150, depending on which iteration that you've got. Um, they're a plug and play USB or a USB adapter that can go into your laptop or go into your computer. Um, they really do enhance what you're doing what you're saying, what your storytelling is about. People will be able to hear you and it feels, bottom line, it feels more intimate, like you're having a little bit more of a conversation with people. And, and so as a filmmaker, um, that is something that you kind of learn. As a junior filmmaker, there's all kinds of shenanigans that happen when all we're doing is focused on picture and our audio goes sideways without our even realizing until we get into the bay. And then it's a disaster. You have to do reshoots. So knowing that kind of thing and also being on meetings and being on webinars with people that use and don't use microphones and uh, hosting a podcast it, it does, in my opinion, really help. So it's something to consider. These options, you can see on the, on the right-hand side, there's a thing called a lavalier there. And the, uh, the lavalier actually clips on, you probably see this on TV or on documentaries, it clips onto your clothing just below your chin, about six inches below your chin, um, and not to the sides, but really as close to the center of your chest as possible is ideal. And then you plug it into your laptop again with a USB. These things will improve. Um, while they're not like a blue microphone, they're not as good. They certainly for $12 will enhance your audio by 30 to 50%. I've used them um, and they are a cheap and cheerful way to really get that extra boost with audio. Do be aware that when you plug these things in, that whatever digital platform that you're on, you will need to go into that platform. Zoom, for example, go into your little audio widget, which is in the bottom left where your uh, microphone is, click on the little arrow that's next to that widget, the microphone widget, and that will jump you into all of your preferences for audio. Once you've plugged your microphone in, it will automatically come up in those preferences and you wanna click on that for your microphone. And so you can hear other people. Uh, you don't want your microphone to be in your um, uh, speaker. You want just your internal um, computer uh, to be really projecting that audio out so I can hear you. Because that does, it will default very easily and it can be incredibly frustrating. So just remember that it's just your microphone that you need to check off in that Zoom widget of preferences to make sure that that's going out correctly. The other thing to keep in mind because your, your um, laptop or computer will adjust accordingly, depending on which platform you're on, you're gonna have to do this with each platform, whether it's Blue Jeans or Google Teams, it doesn't matter. You're gonna to have to go into their widget, make sure that you've checked off your own microphone and that you're able to receive audio from other people with just the speaker from your computer. Um, and there is in your preferences, it's worthwhile if you're still not um, able to broadcast or hear other people, go into your own preferences on your computer, go into the audio preference and take a look and see what's checked off. Cause it too will be reading my, I, in this case, I do have the blue Yeti mic that's pictured here and it does show that. 
So those are things just to keep in mind. And if you have any questions about that sort of thing, there are tons of how to's on YouTube right now, just in terms of how to adjust those widgets. But you guys are going to be audio engineers before you can even say boo. And I laugh about this because I am the farthest thing from it. I am uh, very pedestrian when it comes to my audio, but I do love communicating um, how effective it can be when you've got decent audio going on on Zoom. Hair and makeup, what makes you feel good? Really at the end of the day where we all have different tastes um, and, and acknowledging that and, and showing that on Zoom is really what this is about. What makes you feel good? What's gonna make you shine? Um, uh, generally speaking for me, and I can only speak to me, I keep things super simple because I'm a production rat at the heart of it. I love being on a set. I'm dirty most of the time. The ugly secret of entertainment. We're all dirty all the time. So I actually feel um, very shined up on this kind of a platform because I don't have dirt on my face. But I do go the extra mile showing up on Zoom meetings just to put on a little bit of a little bit of lipstick um, a little bit of mascara, something to help my 50-year-old self shine in the way that I would like to and show up as any of us would in a meeting in an office. It's sort of like that. Um, that leads us to wardrobe. So wardrobe. Wardrobe is one of my favorite topics as well, because this is something that we, of course, with entire costume departments, design for film and television or for commercials we all look at the psychology of the wardrobe. What does that wardrobe say? We're doing it unconsciously when we meet other people. We're making judgment calls about who they might be, who we think they are. Um, there's, there's all kinds of human biases when it comes to wardrobe. So um, I had mentioned the go bag before, but within your go bag, what are some of the things that you can consider at this point? Because one of the things that I really can't emphasize enough is that what you see on Zoom is not necessarily how you're received in real life. For example, I never wear a coral in real life. In real life, when I'm on a set or when I'm going to meetings, I'm in my director's black, I'm wearing a leather jacket, I've got my stomping boots on, I've got jeans on. That's my uniform with jewelry and glasses and all of that sort of stuff. I, I have a, a sort of meet and greet uniform that I wear out there that I'm not really gonna wear here on Zoom. What plays really well on Zoom is color. If you want to just pop just a little bit, a little bit of color goes a long way. In this case, I am wearing the coral, which as you will see, I've got a little chart that we're gonna come up to. Um, we're gonna talk about the psychology of color, but wardrobe is just like hair and makeup. What makes you feel good? What's gonna make you proud to be sitting there and doing what it is that you do, whether you're giving a keynote address to the company that you're running or on TED, who knows? My sister's done that. And I can tell you the wardrobe that <laughs> she went through trying to figure out how she was gonna present herself was a whole other conniption. Um, so given that we're all living in this media universe right now, what can we do? I, I think that if you start testing some of the colors that you might have, go and troll in your, in your closet, as I did, or order a few things on Amazon or wherever your favorite place is. Start looking at color. So just to give you an example, I am going to disrobe, not completely, but I will take off the coral and just throw on a couple of things so that you guys can see most immediately how things can change up. So for blue, for example, <laughs> I'm just gonna hold this up underneath, but you can see even just changing out blue, blue is my color, blue is my jam. This is a blue sweater with a cowl neck that I absolutely love wearing. I never wear it in public, but on Zoom, I love this color on Zoom. So this is something that I, I wear a lot in the winter. It's a little warm in the summer. I rarely wear a white t-shirt. It doesn't do anything for me, even though I wear a white t-shirt all the time when I am off camera. And here's one of my director's jackets. Normally I'd be wearing a black something or another under here. But again, this gives you another perspective of, of for me, I'd be wearing, I'm just gonna change my glasses. This is another thing. 
I feel like I'm, I'm in a tickle trunk trying on all these different things. So I've got my director's glasses on. I'd be wearing heavier jewelry, black t-shirt under here with a big watch and lots of jewelry. And this is how I would present myself as a director. I'm directing a feature doc right now. The first thing I wore in that meeting, that um, interview meeting was a whole lot of black. And that's just what, that's me. And it's probably mm, 75% of the other directors out there. So there is a uniform. Um, another thing that I absolutely love wearing, but it's, and again, this is a choice, is uh, I like to wear white, but I wear white in a jacket sense. So again, it's one of these motorcycle style jackets and I love wearing these. And it just gives me a little bit of collar up here because uh, I do have a 58 year old neck that I'm very proud of, but this motorcycle jacket is uh, a cut that makes me feel really good. And so this is sort of a, a summer look that I like to have as well. So these are all things, all the things that I just showed you are things that make me feel good. They're not necessarily gonna be something that makes you feel good, but start thinking about those color options, whether it's a shirt, think about what's framing you. When I shoot people, um, I, I do, uh, when I photograph people, pardon me, my husband's always saying, don't say shoot people. When, I'm, when I am photographing people, um, I am, and we're talking about all these things, we'll do multiple wardrobe change, changes. Um, I shot one, the band One Republic recently, and there were, there were wardrobe changes, understandably, but it's not just celebrities. Wardrobe changes give us some options, whether it's our mood or whether it's the audience that we are actually speaking to. Think about what you look like and what you want from the people that you're chatting with. What would be the best way to present yourself to get what you want? Um, so we're just going to go into the psychology of color because this sort of really, I really kind of liked this uh, chart. You saw me in the orange originally in the coral, and that's confidence, success, bravery, sociability, which I hope embody not only me, but all of you all in Leadership Global. So if you look at this chart, um, this is, I, I think this is a great way of sort of expressing the psychology of color and how this can inform the sorts of things that um, you're going to wear when you're in meetings. I was doing um, shoots last fall uh, in New York City. It was a commercial campaign. It was really stressful. We were shooting in lower Manhattan. Uh, we were shooting with a cast of real doctors and um, everybody was sort of at a fever pitch all the time because we were all worried about COVID. Um, I was dressing, you know, at the end of the day, I was dressing my crews in sort of almost full hazmat suits, goggles, like the whole nine yards. But going there, walking towards that end game, everybody was pretty keyed up. And what I would often wear purposefully on camera were blues so that people would inherently, without even realizing what was going on, they would trust what I was doing, that they would come to some kind of peace with what we were doing because they trusted me. And, and also to show my loyalty to them, to their brand and my competency in doing that job. The job came off beautifully. Uh, after weeks of shooting, we um, were so proud of the results. Everybody was safe. And so just keeping this sort of thing in mind as you dress yourself, as you make your choices is something that I think is, um, is really smart. Setting the stage. So we've, we've talked about the background just a little bit. Your background, where you are having your meetings, where you are on Zoom, where you are on social, those backgrounds can make and break what you're actually trying to message out to your audience. I think we've all seen um, <laughs> the, the celebrities during COVID that have had the most wonderful messaging uh, of support for fans and friends, et cetera. But in the background, there is something going on that's either hmm, a little questionable, <laughs> but it's just something to keep in mind that when you are on camera, your background is also, speaking of which, it needs to be lit. There we go. Um, so my background, for example, I've made some specific choices. This was all stuff that I, I had in my home office already, 
but I, I, and this might not be everybody's choice, by the way, to do this kind of thing. Um, but for me, I really enjoyed um, sort of putting elements up here that spoke to me. I've got little plants, I've got film books, I've got travel books, I've got an inordinate number of pictures of uh, my family who are all in Canada. So I'm missing them terribly. But this background really sort of speaks to who I am as an individual to a certain degree. And that's something to consider whether you have, Linda does, she has a wall behind her that is lit. And that is absolutely a great choice as well. But keeping in mind that if you're gonna have whatever it is that's behind you, it does need to be lit to a certain degree. Now mine, for example, I think it's overlit right now. So I'm gonna bring it down to 50%. But um, any of your backgrounds that you've got going on do need to sort of separate you. The, the camera needs to see you before they're seeing the background or I see a lot of people sort of sitting in dark holes and that's not necessary. And it's so easy when it comes to your background. Is it helping? Really? That's a good question to ask. Is your background helping you in terms of the message that you're trying to deliver? Is it hurting you? Maybe unless you really give it a look, unless you light it and see what's going on there on zoom, it might be hurting you more than you think. Or is it really enhancing? Is it going that extra mile to sort of frame you up in a way that's interesting, but not distracting from what it is that you are doing on Zoom or on social media? As so you can Karen, see, we have a question too that I, if I don't mind breaking in oh, for yeah. just a second. So yeah, Slavka yeah. said, what would be an appropriate color to wear for a virtual conference facilitation? Well, uh, what's your favorite color? Let's start there. Or perhaps in the psychology of color, what kind of image do you want to project to? Yeah, because it, you know, it's it, it it is very much an individual choice. I personally stay away from greens. Green is not a friend of mine. I end up looking yellow in green. So having a blue looks good on everybody. I have yet to see, and I've done a lot of portrait work, I've yet to see anybody that doesn't look good in blue because blue has a number of colors in there, including green, um, that, that really do enhance everybody and makes your skin tone look good. Um, so blue is always a great fallback. Um, and the two uh, photos or, of Portia and Marie are both in blue. So you ladies are not on camera right now, but you're your photos are both in blue and I would say that that's a beautiful look. Yeah, and I'm going to I'm going to open this up. This is our this is a, a pretty much our our last almost our last slide. Um, as you can see, there's the very messy bedroom of which we have all seen it and and if we haven't seen it, then um, it's there in behind the fake Zoom background, which is fine too. The only problem I have with the fake Zoom background is all I think about when that person is talking is what is really going on in that background? Like, I'm so curious at this point, I just wanna ask them what's going on in the background. So that's the other thing is part of the authenticity. What is real in your environment? What, what helps to enhance what's going on so nobody becomes distracted by your message, by what you're trying to do on Zoom? So, um, you know, while these are wildly different photos of obviously very different rooms, there is the chaos of the messy room is easily righted on any given day. Uh, goodness knows I've been up doing housework at uh, midnight sometimes, um, but really shove it all under the bed, fake it until you make it, just make the bed, anything that's just in here, just worry about that. Just know that nobody else knows what's going on around your feet. You all know that, or you don't, but you do now. I'm wearing, for sure, I'm wearing my yoga pants. I have not bothered to put on my jeans. Why do I need to put on jeans today? I'm not up and running around here. So yoga pants are here to stay and thrive. I'm fairly certain in this, in this digital age, but what you got going on from the waist up is gonna be critical to how you're presenting yourself otherwise. And your background here, how you light it um, is another component. Now I do a couple of things with the lighting back here. I've actually taken shelf lighting, like kitchen shelf lighting, and put it along the base of the shelves um, in this bookcase. And it just gives a little bit of a pop. You can see here, it gives a little bit of a pop 
in terms of separating me from that background and just you can see some outlines of things that are there. So that's that's an option with any of these things um, is be really inventive. The other thing is if you don't want to buy anything, just go around your house, look for your, your spare lamps, put some daylight bulbs in and start experimenting. What can you do to throw light on yourself without being direct light? Do not turn a direct light bulb on you. It will not work. It will not be flattering. It's got to be diffused. But you can do things like put a lamp at the base of the wall behind you or to the side of just out of frame. As long as everything's just out of frame, it's amazing what you can you can pull off with lighting. Um, and just use your available lamps. The other thing that you can do if you're in a white or, or a, uh, in my case, my office is a light blue, you can bounce light against the ceiling. You can bounce light against the walls around you if you have a very bright lamp that's really too bright to be flattering. Bounce that light against the wall and that will bounce onto you and also create a consistent lighting experience in your room. All right, Karen, uh, we've got two more questions real quick. We have five minutes left. Yeah. So just real quickly, Faylene said gray happens to be her go-to color, but okay. it's not on the chart. So what would that communicate? I think it depends on what your background is. Um, and it depends if it's a light gray, it depends on your coloring as well. Um, uh, if you feel good in gray and, and again, jump onto a Zoom moment by yourself, take a look at what you look like with your background, with your lighting, um, with hair, uh, glasses, whatever it is that you've got going on. If you feel really good like that, you should use it by all means. I love me some gray, but I, I don't feel that I pop in the same way on Zoom. When I say pop, it means it's a, you know, it's a term that we use all the time with marketing photography, for example. When I'm doing uh, what they call gallery photography for the studios, we're shooting actors in a big white box and we're putting them into costumes that quote unquote pop because they're gonna stand out from whatever um, the Photoshopping marketing people put onto uh, posters, for example, or into the digital media that they're getting promoted out to, whether that's on YouTube, Instagram, whatever. That costume will pop in some fashion on that actor. So look at that for yourself in terms of the gray. Do you pop when you're in a room full of people or not? You might not want to. And this is something also that I do invite all of you to think about. Most of us do not want to draw attention to ourselves. But the great thing about lighting, the great thing about wearing just a little bit of color is that it's such a subtle draw. It just helps the human eye to go to you when you're communicating that important message, when you are communicating with your team, when you're delivering a webinar, that sort of thing. As long as you're doing that, you're doing your job just to draw just a little bit of subtle attention. It makes it easy for people to see you. So that's my answer. And you don't that. fade into your background. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. Sarah asked, I've recently seen a number of people with actual green screen fabric on a wall behind them, yeah. presumably for a better quality fake background and yeah. even a background poster behind them. Are there any yeah. thoughts? Is that still professional looking or does it seem to be less authentic? Uh, for me, I don't do it because the green background in real life, actually you'll, you can get a real bounce. It depends on how much a green screen, I've lit green screen and green screen can have a significant bounce onto you. So it really depends and your surrounding walls. If you're in a, a white smaller office, you can end up getting green suffusing sort of what you've got going on. But if correctly done, uh, green screen can be a great enhancement if you've got a background that you want to digitally project onto that green screen. Uh, it's not something I recommend, but it's not something that I dabble in very much either. Um, if that makes you feel good, oh my gosh, by all means, run, don't walk and get you some green screen. But keep in mind, if you're going to do green screen, it's got to be wide enough and you guys can see 
this, this bookcase right here is about three feet from the back of my chair. And all told, it's probably a good six feet. Yeah, about six feet wide. So when you have green screen, you're really looking at a green screen. If this is six feet, you're looking at a green screen that's 10 feet. Can you accommodate for that? Or can you reposition yourself to accommodate for a smaller green screen. Um, I have had clients this year that have tried doing drop banners and all kinds of things. And they end up ordering these little skinny banners about not even that wide, little tiny skinny banners that they can't accommodate for because they're trying to fit it into employee apartments that are so tiny. In that case, my opinion, <laughs> if you can't accommodate for the big green screen in the background, light your background go that direction. It's you're not saving yourself any time or money with a green screen. It's just uh, if you really want to have some fun and that's what your brand is about, go and do it. Okay, guys, we only have two minutes left. So Karen, do you want to wrap us up and then I will close us out? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, I want to thank you so much for coming today. Um, you know, Shining Online is suddenly accessible to all of us and we do have a sincere interest in this kind of a topic. And if you wanna present yourself with authenticity and allow that genuine engagement that we were talking about throughout this, do dabble in the lighting that I've, I've suggested. Take a look at what that does for you. Take a look at your framing in your cinematic space. Look at your background and have some fun with your wardrobe. That's the bottom line out of all of this. Have fun, look at your camera. Be very aware of looking at your camera. I'm looking to the side to see what all of you guys are doing, but when you look in your camera, you're fully engaging and that does take practice, but you're going to be great at, at this. Just thank relax. you, Karen. Bye, I just guys. wanted to take a moment and say thank you to Karen Somers. As I noted at the top of the hour, she is an award-winning filmmaker, photographer, coach, consultant based in Los Angeles, and her production company is Karen Somers and Company. So if you want to get in touch with Karen to ask her anything else about how to prepare for media interviews, presentations, conferences, or just team meetings on Zoom, please don't hesitate. And as I noted, I'm Linda Fisk. I'm the CEO of Lead Hership Global. And if you're interested in learning more about this remarkable community of unstoppable women around the world, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. It would be an honor and a privilege to get to know each and every one of you and tell you more about Lead Hership Global. So thank you everyone for your time today, for dedicating an hour to learn about how to shine on Zoom. And I think you will all agree with me that we could not have had a better teacher and coach than Karen Somers. So thank you everyone. Have a lovely rest of your afternoon.